I'm Judelle Niemeyer and I'm here today to help you get prepared for making the Valley Blossoms pattern. This video will walk you through pre-class preparation steps which you will need to prepare yourself for a series of four workshops that are, we call work sessions where Judy Niemeyer from QuiltWorks.com and Vanessa Fromm from Fabric Confetti will help you make the Valley Blossom quilt shown here. Moving forward the video schedule will be April 17th pre-class instructions and Valley Blossoms quiltster demonstration. May 16th at noon will be workshop number one where you will make the basket diamonds. June 13th at noon will be workshop number two where you will make the flowering cactus blocks. July 11th at noon we will release video number three which is the bridal bouquet border. Here you will complete only the paper piecing for the border pieces. Then on July 25th at noon, you will get all final applique instructions and digitized embroidery with Vanessa Fromm. Don't worry about missing any of these times, however. Once the videos are posted, they will be available forever on our YouTube channel. In this video, we will walk you through preparing for the workshop, including collecting tools for the class, understanding your pattern, and cutting and labeling your fabric so you can start at the same place as your instructors with each workshop. First, let's gather our tools for the design. The first tool that you need for this workshop is to get your pattern. You can find your pattern either by calling your favorite quilt shop that carries Quiltworks designs, ordering from quiltworks.com, or ordering from the Quiltster Marketplace. At the present time, you can get a Quiltster account for one month for free by using the code all caps in one word, SPRING 2020. In May of 2020, Quiltster will be launching an online marketplace where quilters can purchase kits and patterns and fabrics from sellers in the system without having a subscription to the coloring and planning part of the program. In the meantime, we will give you a chance to try out Quiltster for free, purchase from the program if you like, and see what the marketplace has to offer as a resource for quilting supplies, not only from Quiltworks, but other designers and fabric shops across the industry. Inside the pattern, find the introduction booklet and find the list of supplies on page five. Many of these items are things you probably already have in your sewing room, such as a sewing machine, rotary cutter and cutting board, iron and ironing board, your favorite high quality cotton sewing thread, sewing needles, marking pins, scissors, seam rippers, rulers, pens, and so on. If this is your first time paper piecing, there are some special supplies that you may not have that you will want to purchase for this design. These are included on page five of your pattern as paper piecing tools, and also throughout each of the individual booklets as applique tools. The paper piecing tools include such things as add a quarter rulers in size 12 inches and 18 inch sizes, which have a small lip on one edge and allow you to cut a perfect quarter inch seam. You will also need plastic fold templates, flat headed pins, which allow you to move your rulers over the top of your pins and fabrics and papers easily. Curved rulers, either the 12 inch Creative Grids Wave Ruler or the curved diamond cutting and trimming ruler from quiltworks.com, which allow you to easily cut your curved edges. You will need special types of glue, including glue pins, repositionable glue, and basting glue. You will need a purple thing, a light table, and special applique needles and threads. In addition to the quilting tools, there are a number of items around the house that you can use that help you stay organized when making your pattern. First, a stapler for helping you speed up the cutting process, tape to fix tears or miscuts, paper and binder clips, Yoohoo glue sticks, which work great for lightly gluing paper to fabric without leaving a huge mess. And you will also want some Ziploc storage bags to keep everything organized. We use sticky labels, uh, such as Avery labels, to label your fabric strips. And then you will need pens and a Sharpie to mark your papers and to mark your labels as you complete your pattern. Finally, there are a few new tools I want to bring to your attention. 
Judy will be demonstrating one of her new favorite products, which is a line of acorn pressing products to help you make pressing easier during paper piecing. She uses these products to eliminate fold lines and also get a perfect press on seams where it is extremely important to get a crisp seam line. She also will have applique products, including a light table. She loves the Caterpillar Glow Tables and will be showing you a variety of ways to use this as you make your quilt. For turn under applique, you will also need your laser cut pre-cut template package, a fabric glue pen or Yoohoo glue stick, sewing needles, size 6080 is the preferred size, Roxanne glue based it, a purple thing, a higher weight applique thread, size 60, 80, or 100 weight threads can work great. However, she has also used 50 weight Aurafil thread with great success and often uses a 100 weight silk thread by Sulky. You will need small embroidery scissors and you can also use an applique sheet. Uh, these can be really helpful when assembly of your flowers is taking place as it separates the flower fabric pieces from the layout page to minimize the risk of getting glue on your layout page and allow you to press the fabric pieces down without having to pick them up. If you are interested in purchasing the digitized embroidery for the Valley Blossoms quilt, you can find those patterns in a few different places. First, they are available on the Fabric Confetti website from Vanessa Fromm directly. You can also find them on the quiltworks.com website under related products for the Valley Blossoms pattern page, or you can find them from a local quilt shop. Several quilt shops have included these in the patterns themselves and or have them available for you to purchase as a complimentary product package. You will find that they are available in different ways. One is by the block individually and the other is as a bundled package. Vanessa has given you a slight discount if you purchase them as a bundle. However, many people have already purchased the design for the basket diamond, which is called the tropical flowers, or they have purchased the flower and cactus blocks. And as a result, they only need the border. Additionally, people could be buying any one of those for any of the other patterns that they might go to at any given time. So this gives you the option of purchasing it in a couple different ways. Be sure to pick the choice that is right for you. Now that we've gone over all of the different tools that you need to obtain to create your Valley Blossoms project, I want to walk you back through the introduction booklet and go over some details here to help you prepare for your workshop. The first section I'd like to call your attention to is called Pattern Contents, and it's on page one. There you're going to find a list of the different booklets that are included in this pattern, including the Valley Blossoms Introduction Booklet, the Basket Diamond, which will go with the very first workshop that you do in May. Uh, there are two packages called Flower and Cactus 16-inch Squares, and these will go with the class that you will complete in June. And then there's a bridal bouquet queen border and bridal bouquet applique package. These are two separate packages, but they all go with the workshops that will be completed in July. And there will actually be two workshops. The first one is on July 11th. And that one is for the paper piecing portion of the queen border and then the assembly. And then we'll talk about uh, the applique one and a lot of the applique, including the digitized embroidery applique, will happen on July 25th. So all of these different booklets provide you with different elements of the pattern. At this point, I just want you to make sure that your pattern has each of these booklets in it and then set them out so that as you prepare the rest of your pattern moving forward here, you can put the right pieces with the right booklets in order to be ready for the class. So. The next section here uh, is about the YouTube video. So if you're watching this, chances are you've already been to our YouTube channel. But if you haven't, please go to our YouTube channel and click subscribe. If you subscribe to our channel, you will get an automatic email or notification that tells you that the video has been posted for each of the work sessions that you're going to complete, use to complete this pattern. Um, this also goes over the different dates and what we will go over. 
each of the classes will be posted at noon on the days that are noted. Um, let's see. Uh, in addition to that, I also want to bring to your attention several other ways that you can communicate or interact with QuiltWorks throughout this process. Probably the most important one is to go out to Facebook if you're a Facebook user and join the QuiltWorks Support Network group. On this page, you will be able to post information and see what others are doing or ask questions along the way. Those questions can be answered by um, other people in the group, by a certified instructor who follows along on this page um, every day, uh, or by myself or Judy as we get out there and answer questions as much as we can as well. In addition to that, if you're looking for other ways to interact with QuiltWorks first, you can go follow our website, uh, or follow our newsletter, sorry, which is on our website. So if you go to the main page of the website at quiltworks.com and scroll down to the bottom, you can sign up on the lower right hand side. You can also join another group that we have called QuiltWorks Kits and Classes, and this might be a great group for you if you haven't purchased a kit for this pattern yet as a lot, of, uh, a lot of quilt shops and um, other retailers post their kits on this page. You can also follow our regular quiltworks.com business channel and then you can also follow uh, our Pinterest page and we also have an Instagram page as well. Um, in addition, you may want to also follow the Quiltster pages and the Quiltster Support Network if that's something that you're going to use to complete um, your design. So the next section is actually about Quiltster. So on page two, you'll see a list of step-by-step -step instructions on how to get started using Quiltster. In addition to this, I am going to put together a video about Quiltster uh, so that you can actually, it will walk you through the process of actually coloring your Valley Blossoms. Um, once you get into Quiltster, you can search out the pattern and this image that I've shown you here is an image of what the pattern page for Valley Blossoms will look like. There's two places to start. One is you can choose the one that we colored of the cover sheet. In this case, you'll be able to switch out fabrics for your own and basically follow the cover sheet. Um, the cover sheet colorway exactly, even if you want to use your own fabrics, and or even if you have a kit of the cover sheet colorway, you'll simply be able to open this and be able to see and break down pieces and use Quiltster in that way as you go along with this uh, design. Additionally, you can start from scratch using the Valley Blossoms blank template and completely do your own colorway of the pattern and you'll get all of the yardage information that you need um, and the strip cutting information that you need moving forward. All right, so then the next section is on helpful hints. So helpful hints explains to you how to cut your strips and a number of other little pieces. So I'm gonna go through each of the helpful hints here. The first one is that the fabric that you're going to choose is going to be a 42 inch width of fabric. Uh, you're gonna have different yardages. So I just picked one here. So I picked River Valley fabric 12191785, which I think actually is shown on page four. Um, and you'll see that you need one and three eighths yards of that fabric. You're also gonna see underneath it, a listing of fabric references, uh, which booklets those go into, and then how many strips and which size you need to cut those. So when it says AB1 basket diamond, four six and a half inch strips, and I'm just gonna point to this here on your video, this first line here, that means that you're going to actually cut four six and a half inch by 42 inch strips from your fabrics, and you're going to label those all AB1 as shown here, and then you're also going to put them with your basket diamond booklet. Then for the next one, it says AP5, one four and a half inch strip. Then there's an AP12, one nine inch strip. AP14, one four and a half inch strip. And AP22, one four and a half inch strip. So over here, I cut the nine inch strip second after the six and a halfs, and I labeled that AP12. 
and then I'm going to put it with bridal bouquet. And then I cut AP5, AP14, and AP22, which are the remaining four and a half inch strips. And those also go in the bridal bouquet booklet. Now this yardage does not add up exactly to one and three eighths yards. So there will be a little bit left over on the bottom um, as scrap from most of your strips. The second helpful hint explains to you that a number of the fabrics that you're going to cut are considered applique fabrics. All of the applique fabrics have AP in front of them. The ones for the basket diamonds have a, are labeled as APB. The ones for the flower and cactus are labeled as APD. And finally, the ones for the outer bridal bouquet border are just labeled with AP. So watch for that as you're going through and cutting in order to stay organized on which bags and which packages all of your strips are going to go with. All right, the next thing is um, that you want to uh, be careful on some of these because on Flower and Cactus, you are working with two booklets. So each of these booklets only makes four Flower and Cactus blocks. However, there are many pieces in this that you can get more than four blocks out of a strip. So we went ahead and conserved yardage in Quiltster by telling Quiltster exactly how many pieces you could get off of each strip. As a result, you can't just come to the Flower and Cactus booklet and add up the total yardage between the two booklets. You want to cut the yardage that's included in the tables on page three and four in your introduction booklet and then recognize that some of those yardages may be shared. So as an example, fabric BD1, for two books, you need three five and a half inch strips for 16 and a half inches total yardage. You do not need four for 22 inches. So you can actually get uh, more than four pieces off of a strip here or more than two pieces. I think you can get three pieces off of each strip and that's why you do not need as many strips overall to make eight blocks. The same goes for the applique pieces. So even though each of your booklets over here, each of these two booklets suggest that you have two strips or have one strip for each of the four blocks, you can actually get all of the applique pieces off of one strip. So we still only told you to get to have one strip for APD1 through APD6 in this pattern. And that will be enough to make all eight blocks. Um, additionally, I do wanna point out on the applique that we chose to go with a very colorful version for the applique in this pattern, which means we picked lots of different applique strips. If you do not want to follow the applique yardage in the design, you don't necessarily have to. Um, as you can see from this little image here, there's lots of leftover space here that you may be able to get more pieces off of, which could reduce the amount of um, yardage overall that you have for this pattern. Um, as an example, there's nine fabrics that are used for the basket diamond applique, six fabrics are used for the flower and cactus applique, and 49 different fabrics are used for the um, applique on the bridal bouquet border. Um, each of those has somewhere between two inches to 15 inches of fabric required to cut, depending on what size these applique pieces are. Um, if you want to be a little bit more judicious and you want to make sure that you're using your yardage as efficiently as possible, or possibly even pull out of your um, stash, that's perfectly okay with us. You can do so. Just make sure that you generally have enough space on each of those strips to lay your pieces out and have just some space in between them because you need to cut for the turn under applique option anyway. You need to cut your pieces as closely as possible. All right, another thing on special hints is that some of the pieces um, we chose to break in the Quiltster demo, and I'll show you how to do that if it's something you want to do more of, 
and then alternate the pieces or use more fabrics than may have been listed in the pattern booklet. So for example, this is for the um, basket diamond block. See how we got this alternating look to the um, pieces on the, to these pieces in the center. So the pattern actually states that all of this piece and this piece here, those should both be the same color. So you can see up here, it says fabric AB4 and fabric AB5. However, in this design, we are using two different colors for AB4 and two different colors for AB5. So your instructions don't necessarily explain that here. However, it's an easy thing to change. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the yardage in half. Um, in this case, you just need to have double the strips because one strip could have done all eight pieces and we're choosing to use two different colors. So we need one strip cut for each piece out of the two different colors. Then you label your AB4 fabric with an AB4 and a small sem a semicolon and a small B. And then you label the other one as AB4 and a semicolon and a small A. Then on template AB5, you're gonna put both swatches and then also see how there's two swatches glued there on that table as you move forward. For fabric AB5, you're gonna do the same thing. It's just that you're gonna label one of the color, you're gonna label the opposite color as semicolon A, and then the opposite color as semicolon B, so that you can get that alternating look. The next thing that you do is on your foundation paper when you're sewing these together, see this kind of space here, or actually this is the section, but on that foundation paper, you can actually glue a small piece of the fabrics on four of the blocks in the one colorway, and then glue a small swatch on four of the units on the other colorway. And that will help make sure that you're sewing those into the right location as you go. All right, so on the back of your pattern, there's going to be a total yardage table. And this is what you can use to follow the colorway on the cover sheet and choose fabrics. Uh, but how do you know which fabrics go where? Well, this is the fabric references that we have. These fabric references then tie back to the fabric listing on this page, on pages three and four. So where the first one says basics chameleon, a quarter yard, AP1 and AP40, you're gonna go back to pages three and four and you're gonna find chameleon in the list, which is right here. And that's gonna say AP1 and AP40. I know it's kind of hard to see on the video, but if you open your pattern up, you'll see exactly what I mean. And it also says a quarter of a yard. Um, so this table here matches everything in these tables. This table is the total yardage, and this one breaks it down into all of the cut strips that you need for your pattern. So that still doesn't exactly tell us where the fabrics go. But you can look at the um, picture that's on page 11, and that starts to break it down for you where each of the fabrics go in the quilt. So you can see I have these labeled AB4, AB5, AB1, AB2, AB3. And then for the applique, it says APB1 to APB9. Now, if you need even a further breakdown than that, you can go to each of the individual booklets for each of the sections, and you can find information that lays it out for you there. So page two of the Flowering Cactus booklet has a diagram that looks like this. This is the one that you wanna use. Um, page one of the Basket Diamond has a diagram that looks like so. And then page two of the Bridal Bouquet booklet as a diagram that outlines where all of the fabrics go. And then each of the applique um, sections are labeled. So page six of the basket diamond, the applique is actually labeled for flower and cactus on page two. And then in the bridal bouquet applique, you can see each of the pieces are labeled with the fabrics. Now, if you're using Quiltster, you just click on a section 
and it's already labeled for you and you can add the color you want and then you will get a table that's for your specific colorway that's like the one that you saw on pages three and four. So now what do you do? So I'm gonna go back here for just a second to this page. So you're gonna work your way through your tables on page three and four if you're following the cover sheet um, information. If you've created your own colorway in Quiltster, then you're gonna work through the um, cutting information in Quiltster, which will, be, uh, which will be presented exactly as you see it here with each of the fabrics grouped it's going to have a fabric reference and then it's going to tell you which size strip you're going to put into that you're going to cut um, it doesn't tell you which booklet it goes into so you are going to have to pay attention to that as far as the fabric references go on this page but at least it will help you get everything organized um, so then we'll go back to this page here so as you get your strips cut you're actually going to label it with the fabric reference. Then you're gonna label how many strips you've cut and what size they are. It's also helpful a lot of the times to put the fabric reference in, or the fabric um, skew information on it if you have it, and then the total yardage. You don't have to put all that information on it, but it sometimes it helps you stay organized a little bit more as you're going through the pattern. So cut all of your strips and then label the fabrics and then place them, stack them in order, starting with your number one fabric on top, then number two, number three, then this is 4A and 4B, 5A and 5B, and then you're going to have your fabric number six. So you can follow in that order and um, get all your fabrics stacked. Once you get that done, you can open up each of the booklets that you're going to work on, cut a small swatch off of the edge of each fabric, and then glue it in place on your unit chart. You can see this here, and this helps you stay organized um, once you come back to this in, say, a month, so that you remember exactly which fabrics go where. These also tell you which templates you're going to cut your fabrics with. So if you want to prepare your papers, you can get your papers prepared and then stick the templates with the right piece of fabric as you're going along. Um, you don't have to do that step as Judy will walk you through that as part of the workshop as well. Uh, next you're want to, going to want to cut and label your applique fabric. So this is just a picture showing um, the way we did this for basket diamonds. Um, and again we stacked them in numerical order and then we put them with the applique sheets. And then you're going to want to take everything that you've just organized and put it into a bag with the instructions and all of the applique pieces. And now you're ready for workshop number one, which happens on May 16th. Um, I want to make one more note here. See this applique sheet here? These are your template pieces. Don't cut those out of the background papers at this time. We'll walk you through when the right time is to do that so that you don't accidentally um, lose your pieces or make any mistakes or pick up the wrong thing or whatever along the way. All right, so that's how you prep for workshop number one. So workshop number two is the same way. I'm not providing all the graphics here for you, but basically you label, cut your strips, label them, and then find all of your fabrics for this group and stack them in order. Uh, this just shows the fabrics for the paper piecing. I didn't do a separate image for the applique. And then you're going to come over here and in each of these fabric swatch places, you'll glue the associated fabric into the location so that you have your booklet prepared. Um, you're going to put your applique colors with your applique template sheets. And then you're going to put everything into a bag and then you'll just wait for workshop number two on June 13th to complete the rest of the steps for this booklet. You're going to complete the same steps for the bridal bouquet border. Again, you're going to cut all your strips and get everything labeled. And then you're going to fill out your little unit charts in each of your, um, in your fabric and, or in your pattern booklets. Uh, by pasting a small swatch over the fabric swatch location here. And then you're going to come over here to your applique 
and this has all the applique pieces labeled and you're going to do the same thing. Um, you'll have 36 uh, total applique sheets for the whole pattern. The bridal bouquet border has 20 sheets with it alone. You're going to put all of that, you're going to put those 20 sheets with your applique fabrics. You're going to put that all in a bag. You're going to put the paper piecing ones in a bag and then you'll be ready for workshop number three on July 11th and extending into workshop number four on July 25th. So finally, I just wanted to call your attention a little bit to what the difference is between digitized embroidery and turn under embroidery. I don't have pictures of the turn under embroidery option yet because Judy hasn't finished the applique at this point in time, but the, the primary, um, let's look at, it's, it has to do with stitch size. So you're going to use a embroidery machine if you are using the digitized embroidery applique designs. So those come from a company called Fabric Confetti, which is owned by Vanessa Fromm. And she has gone through the effort to give you a set of digitized instructions that your machine can read so that once you get the paper piecing done, you can it'll tell your machine how to stitch some uh, lines for placing all of your pieces. Then you'll go in and you'll place your pieces and then it, it actually does the stitching around each of these pieces. So it's all done by machine. It's very precise. The process looks beautiful when it's done and you get these very nice popped, beautifully stitched applique pieces that have a um, very decorative stitch around the outside. Under a turn under option, you will not have this thicker stitch. You will use a nice thin stitch along the pieces. Um, and Judy will show you how to do that in the videos. So at this point in time, you'll need to choose which option you want to do uh, because that's going to impact some of the things that you do along the way as you make as you make your quilt. Um, if you're going to do the digitized embroidery piece, you need to go purchase the digitized embroidery designs. One great thing about them is that they work with a number of other patterns. So for example, the basket diamond piece here is also used in a pattern called Rainforest Blossoms. And that block is usable with any of our Meadow Star Mixer designs. So if you go in and customize a quilt using the Meadow Star Mixer blocks through Quiltster um, and you pick this block, you'll have the digitized embroidery all ready to do whatever it is that you want to do. The same thing with the flower and cactus. So this block is also used in a pattern called OK Corral and it is used in a pattern called Irish Thistle. Um, it may be used in others in the future as well but uh, at the present time, those are the two that are published. And again, once you um, purchase that, you can use it for any of the projects that use that 16 inch block. And then finally, this border element. So this border element is used um, for the bridal bouquet border, which is only on Valley Blossoms. However, because of the way that this lines up with the outside edge, and that's how you, how you figure out your placement, this package can also be used with patterns like the um, diamond wedding ring pattern or the diamond wedding star, which doesn't have applique on the cover but could easily have it on there. Uh, I think it would look great on any of our um, prismatic star queen or our queen star mixer series patterns. There's quite a bit of space on the outside corners for each of those as well. And then it can also be used for the flowers for my wedding ring. Um, Vanessa will be coming out with a new layout for this, uh, for the flowers for my wedding ring in the future. It's slightly different than the one that's included in the pattern, but it includes these two groups as shown here. And then she will put the rest of, so if you have that pattern, there's five different groups of applique. This is one of them, this is another. And then there's three other groups and you create this huge border of beautiful applique. So she's going to come up with a layout for those um, three other groups that build off of this corner. 
and you'll be able to use this design also for flowers for my wedding ring at that point in time. Okay, so once you get all your strips cut and everything organized into bags, uh, the only other things I want you to do prior to your workshops is number one, check for corrections. Um, so how do you do this? On pages five through eight in your pattern, there's some, some just general information. Read through that. Um, but on page five, there is what we call a QR code. You can actually get a QR code reader on your phone to make this really easy. If you don't have one already, just click QR code reader when you look on your app section. Download the first QR code reader app that you find. And if you scan this with that, it'll take you directly to the Valley Blossoms page on the pattern. And you can find any corrections listed on the right. I will say that as we, after we wrote the instructions and we've gone through the details of the video, we have found a couple things. Um, so there are going to be some corrections listed. Uh, so make sure to go get those and mark them in your pattern before you get started. Um, if you don't have a QR code reader and you don't want to put one on your phone, the simple way to find this is just go to the quiltworks.com website. There's a page for corrections. You can either scroll down and find the Valley Blossom pattern and they're all listed there, or you can click on the pattern page for Valley Blossoms and you can find those listed on the right hand side of your pattern. Recall earlier that I stated you could change your colorway and do your own thing quickly and easily using a program called Quiltster. To find this program, visit quiltster.com. If you do not have a subscription, click subscribe, which can be either located in the upper right corner or on the drop down menu. Find the three lines usually located in the upper left. Don't forget to use the coupon Bring 2020. This is actually only good through the end of May 2020, so if you're outside of this window, there may not be a special subscription code, but you can definitely send an email through contacts and see if there's something new, because occasionally we put these out. This will get you one month free of Quiltster. When you have colored your Quiltster design, click on the print button on the left side of the quilt editor window. This will open up a print page. Below the print image of your quilt that you colored is a yardage table. The yardage tab shows you total yardage like you would get on the back of the introduction booklet. To find yardage broken down by fabric reference and inch strip, click on the block button, then choose inch strip from the drop down menu. This page can also be printed by clicking on the word print directly below the picture of the quilt and then following the printing instructions on your computer screen. This will give you everything you need, just like the tables on page three and four of your introduction booklet, to cut out your fabric strips, label them, and put them in the proper bags in preparation for the workshops. We are looking forward to teaching you all of the steps required to make the Valley Blossoms quilt. We'll see you on our YouTube channel on the first day of class, May 16th, 2020 at noon.